Hello again, YouTube. My name is Brie, and in today's video, I am doing my art haul for the year, hopefully. I'm hoping I'm limiting it down to a reasonable number of art supply purchases for this year. Um, coming off of a low buy, which was preceded by a no buy, um, I've been in the habit of not making big art supply purchases, and I just really hoping I don't fall back into my art supply hoarding habits because that would be pretty counterintuitive. Um, but yeah, for this video, what I wanted to do was a bit of an unbox. As you can see, some items have already been unboxed and then some swatching in real time, because I do personally like to see things, um, in real time to see how paints reactivate and flow. And then a little bit of a sketch. So hopefully this video isn't too long or too boring for you. And hopefully I don't get too rambly in this voiceover, which I'm doing after the fact. If you saw my last video or if you've been keeping up otherwise, um, I did recently lose my kitty. So um, that's why I didn't record the voiceover at the same time. I just, a lot of this was coming in as that was happening. So I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And that's why I didn't even think to hold off on the unboxing. So going through these items really quickly, um, the first item there was the Karin Dosh Neo Color 2 crayons. I've been curious about these crayons, these fancy art crayons for a while, um, but thought they would be really helpful for filling in large areas before going in with color pencils because filling in those large areas really does hurt my hands. And yeah, it, hopefully this makes things a little easier for me. I got those with a gift card I got from work. So very excited about that. You can't beat free. And then the Jackson's haul is watercolor paint and paint brushes. I did finally get three dark A Gallo watercolor paints to kind of offset the amount of Yinmin blue I was using, which I've come to realize is very expensive. Um, and then I got those Roman Schmal paints I've been talking about for like two years now. So um, my dear friend Spoff sent me a set of four full pans. So I am basically filling up that palette. I got eight additional colors and I wanted to have a fully usable palette. So I went for a split primary. The warm red is one of the ones Spoff sent me. So I already have that in my collection. These I'll go through more as I actually do the swatching because this is a fairly long video and there's plenty of time to talk about it. Um, I also did include the unwrapping for these just because I don't know. I see a lot of people do that, but I tried to speed through it. I don't know what to conclude. <laughs> um, it didn't go well. I'll tell you that from the right now. The brushes I got are the Tintoretto brushes. The um, I originally bought the A Gallo Signature 2 palette and it came with a travel mop brush from Tintoretto and I instantly fell in love with it. Um, the problem is with travel brushes, they tend to run a little bit more expensive than your standard brush of the same make. And as I do eventually plan on getting back to traveling, it's been a really long time. I'd like to save that one if they do wear down, um, for those trips themselves. And I've been wanting to get a couple mop brushes from the same line in their standard sizes. Um, these two, I got a three zero and a two and I definitely use them in the painting so I'll talk about them more then but I'm basically very excited and very happy to use these more so yeah the sorry the 1407 line and then um, the last item which I go through really briefly is the art toolkit oh the the Jackson's haul was done with a gift card that I got from my family for Christmas so I I'm fortunate enough to have paid for none of that. Um, it, the gift card or the voucher actually also came with a set of graphite pencils. So you'll see those swatches briefly when I open my sketchbook to make the paint swatches. I should point out that the swatches for the crayons and the um, pencils have already been made and they will not be used in this video. I'll save that for another time. This video, the painting is just going to be the Roman Schmal. So the art toolkit purchase, this one I made with my... Um, credit card reward points. So that was their folio palette. It's their largest palette. And I basically got it because I don't have a palette for my gouache, uh, my schminka gouache. And I really don't like these metal tins for gouache. I just feel there's a lot of room for it to break up and fall out. So I'm hoping the slimmer 
size works well and then I can carry it around with me everywhere. So here's the hoping I use that a lot on the go. The A Gallo paints I will swatch here but that was just me showing that I did already take unwrap them, put magnets on the back, and stuck them in that tin. I actually will be adding two more paints to that collection um, because there is space for two more and I was not able to get Nocturno from Jackson's. They were they didn't get it in the restock. On um, the other one I got is Indian Throne Blue and that's just because I really love PB60 at least from Schmincke and I wanted to try it out from another brand so that way I can reduce some of my yeah, I don't know why. I have a really hard time opening paint. It's like the easiest task and I fail at it routinely. But yeah, so eventually when you see that palette again, it should have those two paints as well. So yeah, um, like I said, I went with a warm and cool of yellow, red, and blue. Um, the yellows are Aquarius yellow, Aquarius being the Roman small line. Um, the red I'm moving now is actually the Aquarius red. So I'm not going to go through all the pigment information. It's listed and I briefly show the swatch cards after the full swatch cards I made after I finished the regular swatching in my sketchbook. So you can pause there if you want to really look into all the details. Um, the next one is the Quinacridone Gold. That one I wanted to get before they ran out of the pigment PO48 because their supply they've already announced is running low. So I don't want to miss out on that opportunity. I also got the Quinacridone Burnt Sienna, which is PO48 on its own. So yeah, hoarding up the PO48s before they cease being manufactured into paint, which will be really sad. So Aquarius Red, the cool red I went with is the Cherry Quinacridone, uh, Cherry Quinacridone Red. Um, I like the name. I like the the look of the color online. It isn't quite as vibrant and deep in colors I expected. So we'll see how that plays out long term. Um, the Thalo Turquoise, that's the one I couldn't get the wrapper off of. I live in a very warm and humid environment, so that is not uncommon for paints to get a little gummy, especially those made with honey. Um, so I set those aside. The, actually, two of the other ones that are there also, spoilers, are very sticky and got stuck. Um, I put those in the refrigerator for half an hour, took them out, peeled off perfectly. Um, afterwards, when I do the swatching, and I'm going to warn you about this now because you'll see it, I did the swatching in real time. Nothing was pre-wet. Um, I like to see how well the paints reactivate. They seem to have like a little almost waxy film. Oh, there's the Karen Dosh crayon swatches and the Jackson pencil swatches. So eventually I'll get to using those. But yeah, those paints that were in the fridge almost had like a waxy coating to them where I kind of had to rub at it a bit to get it going. But once, after, by the time I finished my swatch cards themselves, um, no longer have that problem. It's been fully made back to normal and they re-wet beautifully. So very excited. <laughs> I was a little concerned there for a second. So I'm going to continue doing a bunch of little cuts here. I'm just trying to Unboxing and swatching is a slow process and I definitely wanted to include a sketch in the same video. I'm always a little bummed out when people do haul videos and then don't actually show the things that they're unboxing. I like to actually see it in use, so I wanted to include a sketch as well. But these videos can go on for a really long time and I didn't want to make a three hour video, so I'm going to speed through a little bit. So for the A Gallo colors, I only swatched the new ones I got, the Burnt Umber Cypress, the Moralone, Moralone, I apologize, Italians, and the Payne's Gray. So I had said this before, and I don't remember if I said it in this video already. Um, what I really wanted to do was add some more darker colors to this palette, but also I... Um, wanted some more browns. The chromite brown that came in this palette is really, really interesting. It's very unique, but it's also very transparent brown and it granulates a lot. So I wanted just some more browns to work with because I do use them quite a bit. And then the paint's gray. I think it's just good to have a really dark color in the palette to use for convenience mixes or convenience darks or even neutralizing a tone that's just too saturated when you're lazy. They're just fun to play with. I don't use Payne's Gray quite as much as I used to, 
early on when I started watercolor, it was definitely one of my favorites, but even sometimes you just want to do value study and it's good to have something like that. So yeah, moving on. Um, as you could see, the, the A Gallo reactivated really easily. So did the Roman Schmal. Always a good thing. I don't like pre-wetting my paints because I don't know which ones necessarily I'll be using in the painting. And I love the convenience of just being able to dab a wet brush on it and pulling up a bunch of pigment. It's beautiful. So yeah, I have all the pigment information there already. I know this isn't the best quality and my handwriting isn't the best. And also I kept writing down the wrong thing. So it's a little sloppy, but like I said, the swatch cards will be in a single like three second frame. So if you really want to see that, you could pause there. I spent a little bit more time on my swatch cards than this. They look a lot better. Um, this, I was just excited to try out the brushes, try out the paints. And I wanted to see the whole palette together in the sketchbook and have that as a point of reference. I used to be a little weird about swatching it in a sketchbook and felt like it was just wasting space. And I know some people do all these big like color mixing studies and all kinds of stuff in their sketchbook. So I'm trying to get past that. Um, it is nice kind of also while flipping through sketchbook to be like, oh yeah, and here's when I got these new paints too. So here's where I started using them. So yeah, it's not really wasted space. It's testing out new materials and also keeping it as kind of part of the memory of this time in the sketchbook. So yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm past my bedtime. I don't know what's going on. My video, I was exporting it and my computer went to sleep, which it shouldn't have done while it was exporting a video. So I came back all ready to do my voiceover and the video needed another like two hours to finish exporting because it fell asleep and didn't need a new coffee. I don't know. It just was not responding. Um, it was supposed to only need like another hour left, any another hour anyway, and then suddenly it was over two hours. So yeah, that's, that's on me. So yeah, Thalo Turquoise was definitely one that was in the fridge and you can definitely see it didn't pull quite as much pigment as the other colors right off the bat. But yeah, once it got going, it's great. I love this color. I'm very excited. <laughs> the um, cherry quinacridone, I don't know why I'm struggling with that, cherry quinacridone red, um, it was not as vibrant, not as, it wasn't as deep a value as I expected from that one. It's hard to tell when you're picking colors from the website. I do, lo I do love playing with the quinacridones, so when I saw that one, it's one I hadn't tried, I wanted to try it out. But yeah, I think I'll be adding... Um, in no rush whatsoever, eventually probably throw in a quinacridone. I think in Roman Schmal's line, it's quinacridone pink or magenta. They're two PR122 options. And I think I'll probably add one of those because as you could see, these pans are sliding around. There's enough space for another. And now Roman Schmal also added half pans. So if I wanted an even smaller pan, I can put up to four more of those in here. I don't know. Um, I, I don't think I'll switch to the half pan though just because I want this palette to be able to fit like a really big brush like this one or even larger in there and just pull up a lot of paint and potentially work on those larger paintings I keep talking about working on um god I don't remember what I've talked about already it's getting late so I am still having a hard time in my creative endeavors um it has been a tough month for me and I know painting is not an idle endeavor but it does involve a lot of sitting around and even the having the idea of like what what to even draw before even starting a painting I'm struggling with that right now um the blank page is really overwhelming to me still <laughs> and I just I have some ideas of things I want to do but I just can't bring them to a page yet so I'm trying not to be too hard on myself because things take time and I'll get there eventually. But right now I'm just not pushing myself much in that direction. So today's painting will just be a sketch. I'm just trying out new paints. Um, I wanted to test skin tones because I love painting skin tones. It's something I do a lot. And if I'm struggling to make the same kind of skin tones with a new palette, then I know it's probably the palette and not me. Um, I also wanted to fill a larger area and play with the granulation on 
I, I ended up doing that with the shadow gray spoilers, um, just to see how that looks. Um, and I did that wet on dry. I also did a little halo around the character eventually, or at the very end, just to see how the paint dispersed in water. So I did a little wet on wet. So basically this is just a n lower effort <laughs> sketch um, to really test out paints in the same way you might test out something just by mixing a bunch of colors just to see what your palette's capable of. So definitely try to keep this low pressure for myself. Um, I was sitting around trying to come up with something to draw. I knew I needed to have something for a video this weekend. Granted, I know I don't have to have a video. If I missed a week, everyone would be understand. But I really wanted to try to keep the schedule. And I it got to the point where it was Saturday and I was sitting in my D&D game. We finally got to play again. It's been so long. It was, it was exciting. Um, and I still hadn't sketched anything and we were in like a long fight sequence I'm like I have plenty of time I have my sketchbook in front of me and nothing was coming to me and finally I was like just draw your character um I made a comment about that in my last sketchbook tour that I don't have a lot of experience drawing the same characters over and over again so I struggle with it and um I had drawn him a couple times in that one so I figure I would draw him paint him again and yeah so see how that consistency thing's working out and it is not <laughs> yeah he looks different every time i paint him but that's okay you know practice gotta practice and like i said i'm also struggling a little bit so it's all good i i got something on paper i test out these art supplies it was just an experiment you yeah it, it's all good so otherwise um the paints yeah I love them. They re-wet beautifully. They mix beautifully. They flow beautifully. They're very high flow paint. Um, I don't think quite as much as core, but they're pretty up there in terms of the way they just kind of race off in water. Um, I went with a, because I didn't spend as much time on this sketch, um, like it was maybe two hours, which is a very quick one for me. And that was with me being very slow in general. Um, I already completely lost my train of thought of what I was saying. Trying to recalculate. Yeah, it it doesn't get to the point where I do anything too high value, but also my character is pale, so it's fine. Um, it's I wish I could have pushed this a little farther, but I just didn't have the energy to. I also had, on Saturday, trimmed the crepe myrtle trees in my yard. We have three of them, and they each have five... I mean, it's one tree, but there's five individual, it looks like five trees in a little circle. And I did that with manual clippers. So I was also a little shaky and my body hurts. So I, I really couldn't push myself too much anyway. Um, one thing I can say is being that I was a little shaky and a little sore, I was very impressed by this brush. Um, it, the other brush, the larger one, I did have a little bit more difficulty controlling just because it does taper to a very thin point but then gets wide very quickly but this one just the tiny little lines I could make was just remarkable to me so I normally use a Princeton long it's kind of like somewhere between a long round and a rigger I forget what they call it um, to do small details I didn't need it at all this brush got smaller marks than that one did and I'm so excited I love being able to have like fewer brushes that handle all the work so yeah it's beautiful this brush holds so much water so much paint um and i found it generally pretty easy to control and yeah this might be my new favorite brush we'll see i'll give it time see how it handles wear and tear the only problem i have with mop brushes is because you know like i said i have a hard time control in general i tend to grip things by like like the brush i tend to grip towards close to the bristles and with mop brushes because they have those metal bindings I don't know the proper term the if I hold it wrong it does cut into my fingers Juno is making herself known so if you hear her in the background just say hi but yeah um I I really I really love this brush already the larger one I think is going to be great when I start doing some larger paintings but I just couldn't believe how this one and even the other one held its tip it was it's awesome I'm so oh my god she's getting louder 
Okay, she's only going to talk when I talk. <laughs> so... Come here. You want to say hi? Okay. I apologize. So, yeah. Um, ah, I've lost my train of thought again. But yeah, it just... it's I These brushes, as long as they don't wear poorly, I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of them and really love them. So we'll see. Um, I do have the one travel version. And like I said, I want to save that for when I actually do get to travel more. But... She's bringing me a straw. I don't know if you could hear her. Yeah. So... Can you keep it down, buddy? I'm just going to let her continue to whine. She wants me to go to bed. <laughs> so... The the paints themselves, like I said, I'm very excited about using them more. Um, I think the color selection is pretty good. Like I said, I'm just not sure about that cool red choice. The, but worst case scenario, I can include a PR-122 from another one of my palettes in here temporarily so I can work with this palette a little better, but for the purpose of this painting, it worked for what I needed to do, which was mixing the cooler reds, or be, being the cooler red and mixing those purples I use in the skin tone. Um, I also really made use of the phthalo turquoise in this one. Um, I wanted to, like, my character has, like, kind of turquoise eyes, um, but I just also want to play with it a bit more in the shadows and the skin because it's something I've been wanting to play with more, so I had fun with that. Yeah, I really don't know what else to say about this particular thing because, like I said, it's it's just a little sketch. I'm just happy I painted something because <laughs> it feels like it's hard to come by. I I should say, to be fair, um, I have been working in a Hobonichi five year planner um, or journal, Hobonichi five year techo. So I wanted to use one of those and Hobonichi for those who aren't familiar is really like a planner company they're really known for their their various planners they're Japanese they use Tomoe River paper which is great for fountain pens so it's not as much of an art journal um the paper is super thin but what I wanted to do with my five year was do a little doodle basically every day if I can uh, to keep it basically as a memory book and I have been keeping up with that more or less this year so far um, this is the first year of it. Um, it starts in 2023, goes through 2027. So it's kind of a big endeavor. I felt like if I fell off the wagon, I can just jot down like a memory, like in pen. It doesn't have to be a doodle, but I like the idea of having it. Um, so I've not doodled in it every day, but if I miss one day, I tried to do my doodle the next morning. Like sometimes I didn't have something to say until the next morning. So yeah, I have been doing that daily, and those really are like 10-15 minute doodles. Um, so nothing extraordinary. It's an A6 journal where each page has a row for each year, so it's very little space to work in. It's very low effort, low expectation, so I'm having fun with that. Um, but I don't really feel that it takes away from my art time. It's more like it takes away from my journaling time, so it doesn't really feel like art to me, even though I am doing little, it's more like ink doodles with some watercolor washes. So it's different from what I normally make anyway. Um, but yeah, otherwise I've painted this and Maggie this year and that's about it. So, or well, this year's only been a month, but I used to paint like constantly. So I feel really out of sorts. Hopefully I'll be able to get the energy back soon and get back to it make things more consistently because I do miss painting more. I did talk about some challenges, um, some goals I had for the year. Um, I still do want to act on those. So the, the first one I decided I picked three topics I really want to study. I talked about this in a prior video. Um, one is diversity, people, especially people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities. Um, and that's the first one I'm going to tackle. The next one was clothing and the third one was lighting and lighting. If like, I don't get to exciting lighting until next year, that's perfectly fine. It's 
those first two topics are already quite big for me. Um, and I don't want to get so involved in just study, study, study that I don't apply it. I don't paint. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this, the shirt is just shadow gray. I really just want to see how the paint broke into its different either colors or granulated. And I love the texture. It's beautiful. So yeah, I will be starting to take on port a portrait challenge soon, soon, but I'm not quite there yet, but hopefully I'll get that started in the near future. I was going to give myself a start date for February on that one. So I'm not off track yet, but I haven't started either. Um, one more thing I should point out is that I am using my new camera in this video, but it's not quite right. Like it's not quite as crisp as it should be. And the colors aren't quite there yet. Um, it's just something I haven't had the energy to look into yet, but I'm going to get it fixed. It's still like miles ahead of my prior camera's footage. Um, it's for one, not incredibly blurry at the moment. I take it off the memory card. So, and look at it. So that's great. Um, but yeah, there's still some mileage, some settings, um, adjustments I need to make. I just haven't had the time or energy for it yet. So hopefully these videos will just continue to be better quality as I proceed. So yeah, the, the paint, when it goes right into the water, it disperses really beautifully um, and spreads, makes some nice blooms. I decided not to do a solid color so um i wanted to use some sparkles so i brought in the silver mica from an old fine tech mica palette just to give it some texture and otherwise that's really it for this painting so i hope you're all doing well i do apologize for the cat disruptions um and i hope to see you in a future video bye <laughs>